G'day, this is Lucia. Welcome to my art channel. In today's video, I am going to continue with my uh, deco art satin enamel pearl cloud pores, whatever you want to call them. The last one I did, the beautiful Dutch pour combo, was beautiful when I did it, but there was a few little inconsistencies when it dried, sadly, which is uh, a disaster for me because I really love that piece. But um, so I'm still ironing in ironing it out the deco art satin enamel mix that I've got I'm not quite there yet I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong at this point apart from not having the correct recipe obviously uh, but I am been playing around with a few of the different ingredients here in Australia to try and get something similar now as far as the cloud part is concerned it wasn't too bad my problem was that when it dries, it tends to dry with a little bit of a lip. It doesn't go over the edge. Now, I don't know because I had spread it out evenly over the canvas, but I don't know why it kind of, as it's drying, it feels like, it looks like it shrinks a little bit and it dries up and it, there's a little lip between the edge of the canvas and where it's dried off. The other problem I had, and that was primarily my fault, I didn't actually measure the place, I uh, didn't measure to make sure that the surface that I placed the painting on was absolutely straight. I just eyed it and thought, oh yeah, that looks straight. <laughs> Stupid me. And unfortunately, that meant that the painting tipped to one side a little bit and made the, the style a little bit squiff. Still okay as far as the design is, but not as beautiful as it was when I first completed it. So that was heartbreaking for me. So please <laughs> make sure that the surface you're going to put your wet piece is straight because if it's not, create a beautiful piece like I did the other day and then you come back to it a few hours later or even the next day and it's skiwiff and you think, oh, my God. So rest assured, if you make sure that the surface that you're going to place your painting on is straight, you should have a better outcome. Now, today I was going to do another uh, Dutch pour combo, but just until I get my Deco Art Satin Enamel recipe down pat, I am going to try something else. So I'm using a 30 by 30 centimetre, 12 inch by 12 inch MDF round. And what I'm going to do is use the colours, like I'm trying to get rid of all these colours so I can actually mix some new colours as far as the um, Dutch Paul colours are concerned. So I'm going to do maybe either a ring pour or a dirty pour, or sorry, a straight pour. Um, we'll see. We'll play it by ear. So I don't want that on the top. I want that on the bottom. So what I'm going to do, I really loved this red colour. It was beautiful. I've got to be careful with colours because some of them are the right consistency while some of them are a little bit thin. So I've got to make sure that whatever I pick up is the same consi consistency. And they're pretty much, <laughs> they're um, running out. Okay, let's go on to the bottom of it, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so there's not much left for that one, so I'm not going to worry about that one. Let's try this one. This is the, oh, the colours were Born. Born Merlot was the red one. Then the PBO Vermilion was the second one I put in. Followed by Pebio Iridescent Green Yellow. And it's probably more of a dirty pour than a clean pour, but anyway, because I'm just pouring them in willy nilly. Um, a little bit of this orange EDP or Eraldo de Palo Neon Orange. So I think they're all, whoops. Because I think they're about the same consistency, these ones. Although that looked a little bit thick, in my opinion. 
All right, this one, I can't tell you what it is right now, but I know it's a Nerelda de Parla metallic colour. I'm thinking, yep, Rainforest. Just willy nilly colours. I have, I'm not even. I did that the other day and they turned out pretty well, so I'm hoping. This is the uh, Arola de Palo Metallic Fuchsia. It's not to say. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Fucking silly bugger. Um, I'm just going to put a couple of trips of the white which is the deco art satin enamel recipe yeah this one has got one part paint uh sorry one part deco art satin enamel one part Iraldo de palo white one part liquitex pori medium and two parts of australian flow trolls so that's what i used the other day so this may or may not work, and it may not be the correct recipe, but I'm not going to know until I keep trying and having a bit of a play, until I see what's going on. Now, let me see. I like this one. This is the tra Tranquility from NEP. Um, I think any others might be a bit. Oh, this one might be alright. This is metallic pearl. Now the other thing I, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I heard this, and I'm not sure whether it's 100% correct. But uh, I might shake this one first. I'm not sure whether the pearls and the metallics work together. I do, do remember hearing at some stage that. They don't work as well together, but we'll see. That was um, High Croft, Whole Croft, sorry, Metallic Pearl. Now, what other colour am I going to put in there? What other colour do I have that I can put in there? I like the Araldo de Pilot Melon Sorbet. Oh, jeez. Like I said, I'm just using colours willy-nilly. Just to use them up. One other colour that I can use, and it's also a metallic colour that's the only problem, is the my custom made copper. Now, let's hope this doesn't muddy and <laughs> come out really yuck, but let's see. I love experimenting, so because sometimes things work out, some of the most of the times they don't but you're never going to know whether something's going to work out until you try it. So here goes. Will I do a ring pour of sorts? Why not? coming out in chunks so I'm thinking that maybe one of the paints might have been I think it might have been that orange the neon orange I think it's a bit chunky so I'm not getting a real proper ring pour yeah oh it's like a big glob then gloob whatever you want to call it hmm I don't think I did that too well. All right, I'm not sure I'm going to like this, but anyway, we'll see what it looks like. I'll just give it a bit of a torch. And there's a, quite a few little goobies in there that I can see. I'm going to have to pick them out. Oops, it's going to go off the edge. Yeah, so one of those colours 
I think I might have been neon orange because it looked a little bit thick in my eyes. Okay. I'm not sure I really like that all that red bit there, but well I'll just take it to the edges. I think there's some more goobies in there that need to come out. Lots of goobies. Okay, I'm going to spin it. I'm not liking all that red. So, it's a little too much red. I'm not sure, not sure, actually I like that bit there. So I'm going to just tip it off a little bit up the edge there. Maybe get rid of some of that red off the edge there. Okay. Lots of little goobies. Look at that. Yeah, I'm not liking that too much. I think maybe for this type of painting, I think my paints are a little thin. Should have probably used something a little bit thicker. Maybe I should have stuck to the Dutch pour, and I probably will do a Dutch pour if this doesn't work out. I'll give it a spin. Now it's off centre, so I better move it a bit more central. I like that little bit there. Unfortunately, the bits that I like come off. Another experiment down the drain. Doing quite a few of those lately. All right. Now, the actual metallic pearl, while it looks cool, it is crazy in a bit. And I think maybe the metallic pearl might have had a little too much flow troll in it because I reckon that's what causes the crazy in the paintings. If you have a little too much flow troll, or Aussie flow troll, that is, I don't know about the others, it has a tendency to craze. So it's interesting now that all this bit here, something's happening there, so I might just wait a little bit, or I might even put that aside and do something else and then come back to it later. See, after I see what's happening to it. Obviously those little orange bits are horrible, but I like the rest of it. So like I said, I could either use it as a background or I could use it as the base for a Dutch pour once I see what happens with those colours coming through and with the um, deco arts and enamel, whether it does any clouds or not. There's a few little cells here and there happening, but, and it looks a little bit cloudy there, not over the top, but a little bit. So what I might do is put it aside temporarily and I'll come back to that. I'll just move that out of the way. I could probably put it on this. Hopefully this is straight. Not that it matters too much because as I said, it's just... This is not what I was going for anyway. So I might just move this out of the way temporarily. And like I said, I could come back to it. Or I could leave it and make it a background. I'll just give that a little bit of a wipe underneath. Let's try something else. I've got another MDF round. Uh, 30 by 30 centimetres, 12 inch by 12 inch. Which I'll, excuse me, which I'll use, but this time I'll use it as a
for a fish ball. And they can stay in there actually. Oh, that's got a hole in it. They've got a hole in it. It must have been the original one that they used to cut the rest of them. Doesn't matter, we can use that, that's all good. Um, all right. So let's pour the paint, the Deco Art Satin Enamel, as the base. I'm thinking that might be enough with a little bit of luck. I'll spin it and we'll see. Go right off the edge because I don't want any lips especially if uh, it shrinks when, as it dries because that's two paintings I've done that were both Dutch pours and when the paint dried there was a little lip where there wasn't one when I first painted it so I'm thinking that as it dries it must shrink that's my only thought really that it could be Don't know enough about the paint to tell you whether it is or isn't the case. But it will be interesting to see. Now, if this does the same thing, it could be because it doesn't go right to the edge or something. So I'm going to make sure it's right on the edge. Give it another little spin. All right. I love that red. So I'm going to use that red again. Love that red. Um, I still have some vermilion, not much. These are the colours that I used, or sort of colours that I used the other day. Some of them are no longer there. This is Pebio Iridescent Blue Violet. Love this colour. It's beautiful. Oops. And that's the end of that one too. So I'm coming to the end of pretty much all of them really, which is good. Then the Eraldo, Meta uh, Eraldo Di Paolo Metallic Rainforest. It's got a bit of a green look to this one. We will go with the Eraldo Di Paolo Melon Sorbet instead. Whoops. All right, now that is really widened, so I'm not going to do any more. I'm just going to leave it at that, I think, because it's widened up too much and it's going to take over the whole, whole thing, I think, which we don't want. So I'll just uh... all right now. What I might do instead of using that hair dryer, oh, will I? All right, we'll go with the hair dryer. Wish me luck. I don't know whether it'll do what I want it to do. That's the only thing. But let's try. Thank you.
probably shouldn't have used the hairdryer because it's only a small area really but we'll go with this just to give it a little bit of character doesn't matter if it goes off the edge I'm loving the purling that's happening already and it looks like there's some happening in there too. I don't know if that's it there. Alright, I'm going to leave it at that. I shouldn't have used the hairdryer, I reckon, because I wanted to get a bit of a twist, but I couldn't get it because it's not big enough and there was too much paint on it, which is fine. <laughs> Look at the beautiful cells on the sides there. I'm going to leave that on the... On the um, on the table uh, I think I can use my skins when they dry but I'm liking that it's doing what I want it to do as far as the purling's concerned I like that little bit there and just a little bit here Excuse me, I'm liking that. Interesting how the pearl is actually taking over the sides there as well. I'm liking that. So it would appear that as far as the Dutch pour is concerned, the mix is correct. The deco art, the deco art satin enamel recipe that I've got there seems to be doing okay as far as the Dutch pours is concerned. I'm not so sure about the other one. Uh, like for ring pours and stuff. My paint needs to be a little bit thicker, so I'll probably mix up some thick paints for that in the next video and maybe do a trial of that, like a ring pour or a, or a straight pour, something to that effect, with the Deco Art Satin Enamel, but I will do thicker paints. And I'll probably toss half of these because now they're all, most of them are gone, are these paints. There's only one or two or three maybe that I can still use. So, um, yeah, so using the same colours I did in the last one, or pretty much similar colours, if not exactly the same, but that's looking good. It's going crazy with the cells, the purling, especially around the edges. Even on the edge along there and there seems to be coming in. So that's what I mean about shrinkage. It must be shrinking in. And if there's not enough paint to go over the edge, which probably was the case on the other one, which is why I spun this, because that meant that it moved a bit more. Um, whereas last time I put it on with a spatula and I might not have gone over the edges enough. And I'm thinking that's why when the paint comes back in, it shrinks a bit, uh, I get that little lip that I'm talking about. I should probably show you what I'm talking about. I'll... Uh, I haven't got it close to me right now, but I'll put it in the uh, video when I edit it. All right. We'll see how that progresses because that will keep changing, I'm sure. So, yeah. So as far as the pearl recipe is concerned, I'm thinking that that might be the way to go, even though I haven't got the correct ingredients to what the Americans use. For me in Australia, this one is what is working for me. Um, if anybody else in Australia has a different one, I know that Mitch Grimer from um, Raisin Paws, he has done one as well, but I believe he uses American Floetrol. 
and I don't have access to American flow troll. So that's not going to happen <laughs> for the time being. So give you a quick squiggy at what I've done. You can tell me what you think. As I said, that'll probably change. Now I'm hoping that my table is straight and that it doesn't go off the edge like the other one did. Although the design of the other one was better than this one. This one's not bad, but as I said, this one doesn't have a lot of room to move and I didn't have, I had too much paint and not enough room to move the, uh, to blow it out. But in saying that, it's not a bad looking, I love the colours. The colours are quite cool, even though it's a concoction of colours. It's not really anything. I'm going to try and remember all the colours that I use so I can put it in the description box. But, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that look, and it looks interesting. You can start to see some little bubbles happening, some cells going underneath, coming from underneath. So, But they're not white. They're the colours from underneath. They're quite interesting. Yeah, I'll leave that. I'll bring you down and let you have a look. Oh, don't worry about the first one I did. Let's scrap that one altogether. I will let it dry for will I. I don't want to move this one because I reckon this is probably the straighter of the other of the two. What I'll do is I might just scrape that up altogether because I don't, oh, should I? I might leave it just to see what happens with the other one. The other one was a failure, but that's okay. I just want to see what happens as far as the cloud part. And like I said, I could use it as a background anyway, so I'll leave the other one. But this is, this is cool. This is similar to what I was going through or to, to do last the last video and it's interesting like I said how on the sides there it's starting to creep in let's hope that it doesn't create a lip I'm hoping that my theory about having the paint go all the way around making sure That it doesn't go off the edge. I mean that that it stays off the edge, so that does, when it shrinks, it doesn't actually leave a lip. All right, I'll bring you down, let you have a look at this one, and you can tell me what you think. And I will continue with my experiments in the next video when I get a chance. All right, here it is, close up. Looks a bit like a bloodbath, to be honest. Those, that red is just wow. <laughs> Um, yeah, but anyway, I love the cells there, what it's doing. I like those wispy bits that I blew out. See how on the edges there it looks like it's purling a little bit? Lots of pearls coming through now. Uh, lots and lots of pearls around the edges there. So let's, we'll see how it goes with regards to the lip as it dries and shrinks. Those colours, see how it's got that those cells in there underneath in the different colours? Interesting to see if they come up at all or if they just stay like that. But anyway, the, um, the pearls are looking cool. Hoping that that's not too much flow troll. I did have two, two parts flow troll in this. I have got another mix with just one part flow troll, but I just wanted to see how it works and if this recipe is the correct recipe for me. Um, I'm sure there's someone out there in Australia that doesn't watch my videos that has something that's probably better. And if anyone has seen their video, please, please let me know and I'll check them out. All right. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when the next video is uploaded. In the meantime, take care. We'll see you next time. Bye. Giving you a quick look at that other one that I did. See how it looks like something wants to happen there, but it's not really coming forth. I'm not sure, but I love this bit. The crazing there is that pearl white that I used, and I think that's because of the flow troll. Those little orange bits are the gloovy bits that um, from the paint that was too thick. So that, that little area there it doesn't look bad. 
I don't mind that, but apart from the crazing from the pearl white and <laughs> those little orange splotches, the rest of it's pretty cool. It's just that bit there that's just too much red. And you can see that something wants to happen there, but it hasn't quite done. So like I said, this one will be probably a, I'll leave this for a piece to embellish. Or if I don't like it, I will just paint over it altogether.